Hello and welcome to In The Hyperloop. Today we're talking with Hyperloop UPV from University Polytechnic de Valencia, which is a Spanish university. I had the pleasure to interview a team member in Spain and they've had a very long history at the SpaceX pod competition. First in 2015, uh, UPV designed a pod that won best overall concept design and best propulsion system. They've grown their team over the years and in 2017 they built their second pod, Atlantic 2, for the Hyperloop Pod Competition 2 in Hawthorne. Today we get to meet Javier who is project manager with Hyperloop UPV and we get a little bit behind the scenes of what it takes to build a pod. They've also built a new test track called the HyperTrack and that's one of the first in Europe and today they've developed a new pod, Valentina, for their third Hyperloop pod competition at SpaceX. So Javier, I mentioned briefly at the beginning that you're a project manager with Hyperloop UPV. Can you tell us a little bit more about Hyperloop UPV and your role? Yes, of course. Hyperloop UPV is, is a team made up of, of more than 35 uh, profile students who are interested in many different things. Um, it's very difficult to, to have everyone sometimes on the same page you know, with this kind of teams. But that's what my role is. Um, I am in charge of coordinating every aspect of the team, from the logistics to the actual construction of the, of the prototype and to the testing too. That's what, that's what I do. Well, that's, that's huge. And, um, you know, as, as I've learned about Hyperloop teams, uh, you know, people can be working on the pod and it's difficult to track changes to the pod, but yet, let alone working with people just communicating and that's a huge job. Um, yeah, it's not easy, but I love what I do. So that's cool. great. So how did you become interested in Hyperloop? I've become interested in Hyperloop because I've always been following Elon Musk and what he does. And I believe that this is um, the future of transportation. Transportation um, means have been, have been the same for the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed dramatically like in many other aspects in the scientific world. But it's time for, for a change in transport, for the way we, we um, think about the resources that we use, for the way in which we connect with everyone around. And when I heard about Hyperloop, I was um, fascinated with what this could then become in the future. So how would you think a future with Hyperloop might affect you know, cities, urban and rural communities? Like with everything, we will need a, a time to, to get used to how we live and how our lives could change with this. For urban commu communities, um, I think that maybe it's easier because we are more used to going and getting a train, a metro, um, having this kind of communication. It's just another way of, of sitting down. For um, rural communities, maybe it's kind of more of a shock because you you will be like more things... Um, will like start to appear in the horizon with the tracks yeah, yeah but i think that it can also join together both communities which have been separated because of um how our society has been progressing but i think that they should be more together and this could make it so that everyone was kind of like in the same page with transport i i can see how that happens and um i mean these are such uh, large distances sometimes that it can really shrink the kind of the rural communities to the cities um, that mm -hmm. time. So Javier, in your role as project manager, um, you know, what are some of the challenges that you've faced? You've touched upon a couple of them of just organizing 35 engineering <laughs> students, but it, are there any other challenges that you... Yes, um, I think that the most challenging part is to, to um, change the way you think about how the projects in university um, work and this is completely um, doing what you think is best for the team trying to get together companies big people to work with your own timings because our times are very limited every day we're changing things and we're trying to get new things for today it's like it's very difficult to have everyone on the same page but that is something that I have to work with every day and yeah it's you mentioned you know just working with you know, companies or universities, that's let alone students. So it's like, it's, there's a lot of different groups that have to be kind of going one direction. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and think about the university as, as, a, um, as a, an, an entity, a public entity. There are many steps that we don't consider because we need things to move fast. But sometimes we, we like 
stop because of these things. Oh, yeah, like yeah. we are faster than some of them. Like we are in a hyperloop already. <laughs> it's the design process is in the hyperloop. <laughs> yes. um, so you've touched on some of the challenges. You know, what do you like working about? You know, the hyperloop community or in your role or this this university project. And inside my own um, work group and my own team, I find the same similarities that maybe we can find with other teams. Inside our team, I learn every day from everyone. Um, maybe it sounds cliche, but it's, it's true. I'm, I'm sit down, I'm doing my stuff, but only by listening what other people do, trying to uh, figure out how to do things best for one and another is something that you get to learn and you don't learn from your, from your lessons, from your normal lessons. And then you compare it to the other teams in the competition. And it's true that they face the same problems. But you can see how everyone in the world is doing the same thing and facing the same troubles. And then you, you get together in California and it's amazing. Like That week is one of the best weeks. Um, last year I was there and it was one of the best weeks in my life. That's what I love about it. From all these university teams and everybody's just so eager to work on this one engineering problem. Um, I don't often see that and it's like really refreshing and you're like, yes, these are, these are my people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe them. Without, without them, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Now is a, a, we're going to switch gears a little bit and close out with some fun questions. Um, okay. What two cities would you like to see connected with a Hyperloop if it could be anywhere on earth? <laughs> well, um, yeah, many cities to think about. Um, maybe I'd stay kind of like hometown where or I come from Spain and we are the Mediterranean Sea close by yeah. and we are having many troubles about people trying to get from one country to the other from even from Africa to Europe and mm -hmm. kind of this transition is quite rough and the governments don't know how to deal with it maybe some kind of transportation between Africa and um, the coasts of, of Europe which touch the Mediterranean maybe mm. from from I don't know from Athens to to well, Cairo or Morocco or something, wow. some kind of easy way of people finding a real solution of how to move from their hometown. Oh, that's that's really fascinating. Um, yeah, we we haven't really touched upon um, international development and and hyperloop and um, and just yeah, nobody's mentioned connecting the Mediterranean together as a hyperloop route. So that's <laughs> awesome. I really like that. Final question, you know, if you could ask Elon Musk any question, you know, Hyperloop related or not, what what, what might it be? Um, uh, can you hire me? Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, <laughs> not that one. Maybe, uh, what about if he could transfer his own conscience into an artificial intelligence body? Like, would he do that? Is it what we're going to do in, in the future? That's interesting. Like that. That's hilarious. <laughs> I know. I don't know if he would do it. I've never heard him talk about that. So <laughs> that would be really interesting. So Javier, thank you so much. You know, how can people find out more about your team and support you guys? Um, in any social media, any social media you can think about, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and we are very keen on what we show, and we have a very tight schedule. Only 10 people from our team work on this brand of what UPV is inside Hyperloop, so we like to show good content and to have everyone together in this um, social media way. So yeah. Well, you guys are doing a really good job, and it's a it's a, set, a very high level for for all the teams. So keep on doing a good work. Thank you so very much for the interview. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.